Hey guys, Devil here, it's been a while, title update 3 is here now with so many new skills, crazy changes, new charge plates, um, may not all of them benefit the elemental SID charge plates, but we're definitely going to upgrade. I've skipped title update 2 completely because I needed a break, but I'm here now back bringing you again all elemental charge plate builds, starting off today with ice. First of all, we can now augment for element level 6, which gives you an additional 20 ice. That's like a 30% increase of total element to its base element. Also, we have a bunch of new decos that used to be on inefficient armor parts, for example, Kushala's Blessing. I will straight go for the first build, which is a dereliction set, and then to a non-dereliction set. Charm, as always, is a general purpose level 2 slot charm. Even though Capcom buffed charm table drop rates with a new melding option, so now it's fairly easy to roll even actual god charms. Like legit, you get level 3 attack boost, a free slot and more skills. And here is proof, this took me like 5 minutes. So please let me know in the comments if you want future builds with better charms than what I've been using on my past videos. Build level 1 is a basic dereliction set, um, test dereliction level 3, ice attack level 5, Kushal's blessing level 2, element exploit 3, which are the key skills to boost your element as high as possible. If you want blood right for health regen, you can just remove some guard decos, anyway 5 is overkill for most monsters. We finally got a blood right deco, so we don't need to bother with Malcino parts anymore. Decorations used are 2 Iron Shell, 1 Brace, 1 Quick Switch plus 4, 1 Quick Switch, 3 Element Exploit, 2 Iron Wall plus 3, 1 Chain Crit or Burst, 1 Hard Frost, um, 1 Frost plus 2 and 2 Tenderizer. Now if you have a better charm and Kuria augment slots, I would recommend slotting in Coal Essence or rolling for it if you're fighting afflicted monsters or any blight giving monster to further buff your element. Defiance is also an amazing and cheap skill to negate drawers, more row, more crit skills. Despite being an elemental weapon, a big damage portion comes from your row melee hits, or really whatever else you like in the augments, I will keep leaving them free, cause the changes are actually very random, so even if I make a pre-made build with Kurio augments, you guys will probably take forever to roll for it, so I just leave it free. Before we jump into the non elixir build, I want to talk a little bit about the new Chaotic Gore um, armor skill and why I didn't use it. Um, because it says it also boosts your element, the Strife one. But is it worth? The short answer is no, it does in fact hit for like 10-20% to more file damage depending on the build of a max out their elixir set, but you need to have 60% portion um, of red health bar and the constant health rate of Berserk to reach that conditions fast is not the best for SAD playstyle. You will be constantly one hit away from dying to have its effect active. It's fairly hard to get rid of Frenzy 2 um, with SAD playstyle because you simply don't attack continuously. Also another issue is the potential chip damage uh, when you're out of uh, the Berserk status. Like, For example, even if you just go to Reliction with Strife and have like full bar of uh, red HP, if you get just slightly tapped or guard a strong attack, you will lose the red portion. So the whole damage boost goes to waste. And I think there is no point, uh, unless you're going for like a specific strategy or speedrun, to use it. It's so theoretical that it literally doesn't work. The only time this will barely benefit elemental charge plates is if you never get hit in the entire hunt. Other weapons like dual blades, bow and savage axe will benefit a lot from it due to faster attacks and mobility. And it will be really good for speedruns because you go anyway for heroics, so you're anyway like at 1 HP full red bar. And on an optimal run, you don't let the monster attack because you try to lock it uh, in any way possible. Okay, so build number two uh, and stronger than the first one is surprisingly another election set. This is your best bet for elemental SAD builds. Mail of Hellfire was never used in builds before or uh, maximum only one to uh, level one or one part because of how uncomfortable the parts were uh, and made it automatically bad. But now that you have so many skills such as Kusala's Blessing, um, Burst, Element Exploit and many more decos, it doesn't matter, you can just slot them in. It simply hits harder and it has 100% damage uptime since it has no required conditions. You just switch to the blue scroll and boom, you have a max element. 
Also, thanks to the new augment levels, we have now a much larger base element, so 20% is even more than it used to be on the previous title updates. So 20% of the, uh, whatever the base is, I think it's about like 18, 19 extra element, compared to the dereliction uh, plus 25, but it takes uh, a lot of time to proc dereliction. So the only downside to this is that you get a lot of negative elemental resistance. The missing levels of element exploit, chain crit, sorry I keep calling it chain crit even though it was crit chain but now it's burst, and call essence uh, you can fill in uh, with a better charm or just cool your augment rolls, it's super simple. I always make my builds uh, this way uh, to have a base for everyone depending on your augments and charm. You can of course further push this, make sure to be in the blue scroll to activate the effects of Mail of Hellfire, don't forget. If you're wondering why I even included Dereliction, the answer is because in my opinion it can still be more comfortable than Mail of Hellfire due to how low your defense gets with it. But yeah, up to you which one to use. Um, Deco's use here are 2 Iron Shell, 1 Magazine plus 4, 1 Burst, 2 Iron Wall plus 3, 1 Iron Wall, 2 Frost, 1 Hard Frost, one element exploit, one tenderizer. Switch skills, as always, are uh, counter more for file damage boosts when guard pointing, um, element slash firing pin, counter peak performance, and morphing at once. On boost scroll, I use Axe Hopper. That's for the dereliction set. In case you go for the Mail of Hellfire build, I use instead counter peak performance on the blue scroll and Axe Hopper on the red scroll because I always want counter peak performance to be on my main scroll because that's how I feel my files. Alright, that was it again. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the builds. I'll go ahead and focus on other elements and the new row builds. There's so much to do. If this video helped you, make sure to leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more built and guide videos. Turn the clock on. With that said, I wish you all a nice day and happy hunting, guys. Don't forget to join.